Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, my thoughts on far and away the most expensive knife in my collection. And that is a uh, Marfione and Borka custom stitch with the black DLC star grind uh, and titanium frame, frag titanium frame. Now, this is a wildly expensive knife, massively expensive. I want to remind everybody, I spent my money, not your money, mine. Um, so it's really, I mean, while I think everybody is entitled to their own opinion, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's, it's really, when it comes down to the purchase, it was only my opinion that mattered. And that's factually true. Um, now, I know people will leave comments one way or another, and I expect you to. That's perfectly fine. Everybody on this planet has a thing that they would spend what they consider to be a lot of money on. So I'm not going to say specifically any certain amount, but like right now, if you sit and you think like, what's a lot of money to spend for a thing, right? Like, well, you'd say what kind of thing, right? So we can, we can throw whatever category we want at it. And there's to you, the individual who's experienced X amount, you know, you have your own unique experience with everything. Uh, you have what's considered a normal amount for that thing. You have what's considered too much. Now, you'll continue to think that X amount is too much or that's the line until you see a version of that thing that you actually want. And factually, inevitably, biologically, <laughs> your uh, reasoning will start to overcome you. That's what happens. I think it's perfectly fine to enjoy whatever you want. But let's remember that you know, we all have a certain foundation and that foundation is often made of wicker and styrofoam peanuts. It can be blasted apart at any time. Uh, there are plenty of people. In fact, the vast majority of people on this planet could never fathom spending this much money on a knife. But because we are all human beings, if we changed around our perspectives or we changed around how we have experienced it, basically, if you've walked my path and done the same things that I have in life that led to this moment, it's very, very likely you would have ended up making the exact same decision, right? So it just depends on your experience and kind of where you are and what you want, what you expect from things, what brings you happiness, right? This purchase was not made out of some delusion about, you know, what type of utility I will get from the object. No, not at all. I know perfectly well that I can spend about 30 to $40 on a pocket knife and get all the utility I'd ever need, <laughs> right? That's not why I bought this. I bought this because I'm a collector. Um, I'm I'm an insane collector, right? I've climbed the ladder to a point where, you know, people don't usually climb. I appreciate things that people don't usually appreciate. There are definitely other people out there who like the same things as me, um, but it's, uh, it's not a common thing, right? And I think everybody in the whole world ends up climbing a certain ladder that few people do right? We all do that. It doesn't necessarily make us, doesn't make me more special than anybody else that I like really, really expensive pocket knives because this guy down the street who doesn't think like me probably has, has his own weird life. Maybe he's like, I'm into weed whackers, man. I got a $10,000 weed whacker in my garage. Oh, I don't get that, but I can imagine, I can imagine kind of there being a weird enough niche community, I mean, really, it's not that hard to imagine in the grand scheme of things. Think of what people are into on the internet, right? I can imagine that there is <laughs> a territory maybe, and there's probably a whole lot of information that I don't know. This is really, really hard for some people to say out loud or say to themselves or, you know, just even get close to saying is it's much easier to criticize somebody else's financial decisions than it is to say, I don't really know what I'm looking at and perhaps there's more information there. That is a much harder thing for people to say, especially behind the safety of your own keyboard, right? Um, so I get it, right? Anything that can be thrown at me, basically what I'm saying, anything that can be thrown at me, I get it. But at the end of the day, I bought this because I am an enthusiast, because I appreciate these things and because very specifically, I wanted a Borka stitch. So uh, a Borka, in this case, Borka Morphione. I would have settled with either. I knew that I was going to have to overpay. That's the other thing. I want people to know that 
I don't think that $6,300, yes, you heard me correctly, I don't think that $6,300 is uh, the appropriate price tag for this. But I paid that price because I knew what type of enjoyment I would get out of this. I knew what, you know, what type of jewel I was adding to my collection. I wanted to add this to my collection. Just wanted to do it once. I'm not going to continue to collect. In fact, I currently collect the stitch. Um, but, uh, I, I don't want to collect custom stitches. Number one, I don't have that type of income. A lot of you know how I acquired this. I had to sell a lot. In fact, I'll tell you, I had to sell 40 knives to pay for this. And I'm happy to do that. I was happy to do that, right? Um, but, uh, I, uh, I, this is, this is something that I, you know, that I wanted to have in my collection. And I knew that, um, the only way to acquire this, the only way, because this is, these types of things are locked behind gates. You don't stumble across these types of knives for a good deal, right? You don't do that. I mean, you could go, you could go buy some goofy clone, right? But that's not what I didn't want that. I'm not, I wouldn't be caught dead with a clone in my collection. No, I wanted the real thing. Um, fully aware of what Microtech does with their pricing, fully aware of, you know, uh, markup, this or that. Um, uh, but I, I wanted that exclusivity. I wanted that cool factor. I wanted all of it, the whole package that came with that, this knife. And it took me a long time to figure out number one, that I was definitely going to do it. And number two, how I was going to do it. Um, but, uh, now I've done it. It's paid for it's over. I have it in my collection and all that's left for me, which again is the only important, you know, <laughs> the emotional response, the only, the only, uh, emotional response that is important about this is, is my emotional response. After all things are said and done, am I happy with my purchase? And the answer is yes. Out now that the eye of the hurricane has passed and the you know the crazy winds have, have passed, yes, I'm very happy with this as a collector. I am extremely proud to have one of these in my collection because it really is one of the most amazing. Despite the fact that it is wildly overpriced, truthfully, if you want my honest opinion, I think this is probably you know somewhere around. Um, you know, maybe a three thousand dollar knife, uh, thirty five hundred, something like that. A lot of people are gonna say, you know, it's just titanium and M three ninety. It's clearly not just titanium and M three ninety. Like, are you are you proud of those words coming out of your face hole? <laughs> it is titanium, right? It's DLC coated titanium. The plainest part of the knife is the frame. That's not why I bought it. Not at all. Not for the frame. DLC coated titanium frame. I was happy with this frame. This is actually the frame I was looking for. I wanted to, I didn't want some crazy meteorite, right? You know, I, I didn't want that wild stuff. I wanted something that was more subdued. That's what I was looking for specifically. And so the, actually the, the frag pattern was a bonus to me, but I wanted a wild blade and I got a wild blade. The cracked ice DLC mirror polish star grind blade as functionally useless as it is, which again is not why I bought this, is definitely one of the craziest things that I have ever seen come out of the knife world. Um, I mean, if anything screams custom blade like that, uh, you know, well, if anything screams custom blade, it's that for sure. Um, this thing has, so it's, this isn't a uh, kind of a scary knife to play with, but it's amazing how beautifully this has broken in because it was a little bit tight right out of the box and it's just going to continue to break in. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this is that it has, um, blue tritium inserts. I'm sure some of you have seen kind of here on the back spacer, right? That's, that was a really cool bonus. I actually didn't realize that that was the case until after, um, I was, I was just about to buy it. I was like, it was like right before I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, there's nothing else in my collection that, that quite looks like this or feels like this. And, you know, the reason that I was obsessing over the stitch for so long is because of the ergonomic lines. Uh, I was a, a huge fan, you know, leading up to this knives like the XM18 with the forward choil, uh, eventually the Spider Coast Shaman, um, the Strider SNG, which I originally thought was one of the ugliest knives I'd ever seen. Um, and, uh, I think, I think maybe finally the CKF Rotten Evo, a lot of knives like that kind of got me, um, really into, uh, ergonomics where there's a large forward choil area or a large choke up position. And then there's a place to put your thumb that perfectly complements that index finger position. And all of these knives do a good job of that, but none as well as the stitch. Because of the shape of the blade, this I mean, it really looks like a, a an arrowhead attached to a knife handle. A lot of people look at this and say, oh, my God, it's hideous, right? Um, 
The reason I like this knife so much initially was not the look. It was when I laid my hands into, uh, you know, the blade and the choke up position, I went, oh man, I can understand why this is shaped like that. That's beautiful. And then I started to appreciate all of the other elements here. Um, I'm currently EDCing the Ramlock stitch. I've got a shadow auto stitch and just a regular DLC auto stitch in my collection. I'll continue to purchase those. That's a little bit more in my, you know, budgetary range um, to be able to collect. But the stitch is definitely um, something that I, you know, want to collect. The other thing that I really like um, is the fact that this is a titanium frame lock, which is, this is the only, the only types of stitches out there that are titanium frame locks are the custom Borka stitches and the Marfion Borka stitches such as this, right? So we have the over travel stop, the hinderer over travel stop. We have really oversized fasteners, uh, a massively oversized pivot. This is all stuff that I came to appreciate, even though hinderer's pivots are not necessarily oversized, right? But the LBS and the overall sort of very, very American, you know, almost unnecessarily overbuilt look. This is stuff that I came to appreciate during my journey, right? The climb, the discovery of hinderer, strider, spider co. Um, it was, it's, it's a lot of those things together. And I, I realized that, you know, the stitches, as long as it's been around, it's, it's kind of a lot of those things that I enjoy all in one knife. So I have many ultimates in my head. I have many like peak ultimate culminations of different types of knives in my head, but the stitch was absolutely one of them. The stitch is almost like um, you know, when you're playing a game and you can beat the man, the, the main campaign, you can go and find some secret items and stuff like that. But there's always like that ultimate thing at the end of the game, right? Where you're like, once I get that, that's pretty much it, right? A lot of modern RPGs kind of hide something incredible at the end of the game. That's just like, you know, if you've gotten this far to get this crazy thing, then you deserve to use it to just absolutely, you know, make a joke of, of whatever's left of the game, right? And so for this particular journey, you know, my appreciation for American knives, kind of the aggressive tactical look, right? The premium stuff and this sort of the, the overbuilt American, and I say overbuilt lightly because everybody's got a different definition of that. But this sort of, you know, almost military premium American um, mid-tech to custom look, this territory. This is very, to me, this is very much like... 2005 to 2010. This was also the time period where I was like discovering zero tolerance, right? This is kind of the the final secret item of that particular game. And again, I'm kind of playing a lot of different games right now with my knife collection, but this kind of represents that to me. Um, I don't think that I will ever enjoy a knife the same way that I enjoy the stitch. Uh, there are definitely other knives that I appreciate just as much for different reasons. Um, but I wanted to give uh, people kind of an insight. If you If you've ever you know, been confused. Like, how does someone get to the point where they're spending that much money on a knife? Don't they know all of the other things that they could have bought? Listen, if you've ever seen my collection, it should be very, very obvious that I could have bought a lot of different things. I chose to buy knives. I didn't trip and go, whoops-a-daisy, I accidentally spent tens of thousands of dollars on pocket knives because I just didn't know what else was out there I could buy. These are intentional choices. So the reason I didn't buy a gun, the reason I, I didn't buy, you know, some beat up old Honda Civic, because that's what that would cost, is because I don't want those things. It's amazing to me that that needs to be explained, but it's because my brain and your brain might be different. Our journeys might be different. The things that we appreciate and get joy from might be different. So this is why I bought this. I'm so happy with it. This is unbelievably cool. And it's also perfect. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. The very first custom stitch that I ever handled was actually from um, my buddy Scott, who lent me a, uh, a stitch from a long time ago. And uh, the moment that I handled that, I knew I'm, I'm going to have to buy one of these. And it's going to have to be soon because the price is only going to go up. And guess what? It did. I would say at this point, the, the least amount of money you're going to pay for a stitch, like a custom stitch, the least amount of money you're going to pay is $3,000, and it's probably going to be for a substantially less fancy version. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe you're not looking for an ultra fancy version, right? But to get the one that you want, you know, yeah, uh, anywhere from three to six grand. Um, there are definitely, uh, I saw one the other day that was almost 10. 
Um, that's, that's what it's going to take. And, uh, you know, the vast majority of people will go on with life never having owned or cared to appreciate a knife like this. And it won't matter <laughs> because you'll be able to take that whatever amount of money it is, right? And buy the thing that brings you happiness. Because at the end of the day, that's really all that matters is that it brings you happiness. I think a lot of people might look at this video and say, this is just, um, you know, a way of self reaffirmation and justification for the purchase. Well, yeah. Um, but I've made 3,700 of, of those. <laughs> I'm also a content creator who enjoys creating content and sharing it with other people. Um, so we all do that. You know, it's like, it's what you did when you spent a thousand dollars for the iPhone you used to leave that very comment, right? You justified it. We all do the same thing. Some of us have a better way of articulating these things, but there's no way around it, right? The foundation is, is that we're all silly, goofy little human beings just rolling around on this planet, which is a speck of dust in the grand scheme of things. So who cares, right? Buy what you want, buy what makes you happy. Try to make good financial decisions uh, primarily. And then if you have the funds to buy what you, you know, if, even if it's fleeting, right, in that moment, a lot of, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments about material possessions and how they shouldn't, we shouldn't let them control us. And eh, I say ignore that. Uh, don't, don't spend so much emotional energy trying to like, you know, figure out the balance of the universe, right? Because that's just full of misery, right? Um, don't do that. Just live your life. Try to make good financial decisions. And when you have an opportunity to get something um, to treat yourself and make yourself happy even for a little bit, then go ahead, right? You only live once and you can't take it with you, right? Which is, in my opinion, just as just as good a reason to go ahead and, and grab it while you can, right? So who knows? So I'm sure this is a very weird uh, video for a lot of people, but I really wanted to share my thoughts about this. Um, I am... Um, I am an extremely uh, happy owner of this thing. Very, very cool. Man, does it make a cool noise when it deploys. Okay, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, this video. Please, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.